Hello to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist for Misha Shade. It's that time again, time for your daily tropical briefing, and it has just been a doozy of a week tracking Hurricane Ian, of course, making multiple landfalls. Here's the latest that I have for you. For today's landfall, of course, it didn't make another landfall. The time was right around 1.05 p.m., and this was very near Georgetown, South Carolina. It made landfall with estimated winds around 85 miles per hour, so that means it was a Category 1 hurricane at landfall. As of the 4 p.m. advisory, which is the one we just got in for this update, Ian has now become post-tropical. What does that mean? Well, it means it's starting to lose those tropical characteristics. It's still going to produce a lot of heavy rain and some strong wind, but it is no longer considered a tropical cyclone. And of course, as it continues to roll over land, it's lost its main energy source, which is the warm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. So of course, it will slowly but surely weaken. Right now, it's about 20 miles west northwest of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, but of course, it's going to continue to move farther inland and eventually weaken. So at this point, we do still have pressure at 982 millibars. That movement to the north around 15 miles per hour. You can see it there south of Raleigh, North Carolina. And as I mentioned, those winds right around 70 miles per hour. So we will have the potential for more strong, possibly damaging wind gusts as this rolls inland and weakens slowly. But we are going to have that threat for some heavy rain as well. Here is the latest track by 1 a.m. Saturday winds around 40 miles per hour. It should be very close to Greensboro, North Carolina. It will continue to weaken as it shifts off to the north. In fact, Saturday right around 1 p.m. only winds around 25 miles per hour. So once again, Ian has become post tropical and it will still spread a lot of heavy rain and some gusty wind up through the Carolinas, even into parts of West Virginia. But overall, it looks like things will start to calm down as we go into the second half of the weekend. Right now, we're still getting some stronger gusts with this, mainly a few tropical storm force wind gust at this point, but of course Ian is on land now, so it is going to continue to weaken, but some wind gusts still near 40 miles per hour over towards Charlotte and wind gusts between 30 to 40 miles per hour for Greensboro, North Carolina as well. You can see it's still swirling that counterclockwise flow, those rain bends still rolling in off of the Atlantic. So still very heavy rain and still a pretty wide tropical storm force wind field or at least post tropical cyclone wind field at this point. So we will continue to track this. It looks like it is going to be weakening, but there will still be some impacts. In fact, speaking of that heavy rain, this is the excessive rainfall outlook, which indicates where we have that highest risk of flooding within 25 miles of any location. And notice the areas in red, Norfolk, Raleigh, Roanoke, Charlotte, Columbia, Charleston. The highest threat for that flooding will be in some of those cities as we go through the rest of the day into tonight. Now, as we turn towards Saturday, that flood risk will lower because Ian will be a little weaker, but there will still be at least an isolated slim shot for some heavy rain that could lead to flooding over towards Charleston and Roanoke and even maybe some heavy downpours across the nation's capital over towards DC. Sunday, that heavy rain threat still persisting, at least a slim shot for a little heavy rain over towards Norfolk and DC. And then after that, we should be completely rid of Ian. Severe risk with this system still persisting. In fact, we've got about a medium category two out of five shot for a few storms that could produce tornadoes. This is going to be around Norfolk and also Raleigh. So certainly all sorts of threats still going on with this system. We do still have those tropical storm warnings in place due to the fact that we could still have some tropical storm force winds, even though Ian has officially become post tropical at this point. So here is that wind field with Ian at one point. This wind field or the tropical storm force winds they extended out over 400 miles per hour. So that just gives you an idea of how huge this system was at one point. But notice that will quickly start to shrink as it moves farther inland. It will be on that weakening trend as we go through the next couple of days. And it's just going to be a little area of low pressure by late Saturday into Sunday with those winds finally diminishing. So that is some good news. We've been talking about Ian for several days. It's made multiple landfalls. Of course, it rolled over Cuba. It made landfall near Sanibel, Florida, and then it made landfall today in South Carolina near Georgetown. So thank goodness we will be rid of Ian. 
in just a couple of days. What does it look like across the rest of the Atlantic? Well, it would be nice to say that it's totally quiet, but we have another system that has a shot to develop over the next several days. At this point, development for the next couple of days, extremely low. That risk for development are only around 10%, but that gets bumped up to 60% for that shot for development over the next five days. And this system is still way out in the Atlantic. It is just off of the west coast of Africa, so it would have to travel all the way across the Atlantic and hold itself together in order for it to be any type of threat to us. So we've got several days to watch that one. Of course, we will do that, but at this point, other than that one tropical wave and of course post tropical cyclone Ian that is it so no impacts for us at least for the time being well so far it's been a bit of a below average season nine named storms four hurricanes two major hurricanes but as we've been mentioning, it only takes one really bad storm and you really don't need a lot of hurricanes. Even though it's been below normal for the season, we have been dealing with a lot of issues, first from Fiona, which was a major hurricane, and now from Ian, which has just caused major destruction across Cuba, a big chunk of the Florida Peninsula, and now into the Carolinas. For an average season, we normally get 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, three major hurricanes, so a little below the norm but we are still not finished with this hurricane season. We are past the peak, thank goodness. We're almost to October. Once we get past the middle of October, the chance for any major hurricane, just a regular hurricane, tropical storm, tropical depression, really starts to slide down and fall. But we still have all the way until November 30th before we can say, okay, we can breathe a sigh of relief. We're out of the woods for this season. But of course, hurricane season officially continues through the end of November. So of course, we will be here tracking it, giving you updates daily until that time. You can always find out the latest on the tropics right here on the Fox 26 YouTube page. Of course, if you don't have our Fox 26 weather app, it's a great app to have. Of course, we've got the Fox 26 news app and of course, the weather app. You can find a lot of useful information there. You can track radar anywhere you're going you can keep up with our local weather so that's a great tool to have and also make sure once you download the fox 26 weather app to check me out on social media we've got twitter facebook instagram twitter ramisha shade tv facebook ramisha shade weather and instagram at ramisha shade so i hope you have a great weekend of course we are here keeping a close watch on the tropics, but at least in a couple of days, Ian will be long gone. Have a great weekend.